Hello everyone, this is Dilip. In the last video, we have seen about encryption. Today, let's talk about hashing. This we will cover in the next two videos. So what is hashing? Hashing is a one-way non-invertible function, which given any input string length, gives a fixed length output string. So let's look at word by word what this means. Hashing is one way. It means given an input string, okay, we get an output hash value. But given a hash value, we cannot get the input string back. It's a non-invertible. So you cannot invert and get input string from the hash value. Gives fixed length output. This means depending on the algorithm you select, hashing will give you a fixed length output. For example, if you select MD5, you get a 128 bit output. If you select SHA1, you get a 160 bit output. If you look at encryption, it's completely opposite of hashing looks like because it is invertible function. You can get plain text back after decrypting the encrypted text. So it's an invertible function and it doesn't give fixed length output string. So depending on the your input length, the encrypted output also changes. Let's move on. I'll give an example of hash using MD5. So there are so many online tools available. You can do it in your browser itself. You can give any string and get the hash value for it readily available. And if you have a Linux system, there are many built-in libraries to get the hash value. Let's look at MD5 hash, which is, it gives a 128-bit output. So I have one string, quick brown fox. So no matter what length is this, it gives a fixed 128-bit output for me. So this is the output. Now what I'll do, I'll just take this B and convert it into a lowercase. Okay, and I'll feed it into my MD5 hash. So the output I get looks remarkably different compared to earlier. So even though one letter, if you're changing from uppercase to lowercase, it is changing the hash value by this much. You can see how complex it will be to trace back the original value from the given output hash value. These are the properties of hashing. So you can derive the hash from the string, but you, given a hash, you will not be able to derive string from it. No two strings can have the same hash value. So this is called a good hash function. And in case, if two input strings result in same hash value, we call it a collision. It's not like collision is bad. Collision exists in a lot of existing hash table implementations in, uh, in your programs, or it's already running on the code as an operating system code. There are a lot of collisions happen, and it's a normal thing. But a, a theoretically, a perfect hash function is one which doesn't have any collisions. So that is collision. Examples of hashing techniques. So depending on the output you get, output size, and the function you use, say number of iterations or number of gates you use, it's called a different names. So MD5 is one such algorithm, which is the oldest one. 
it gives output in 128 bits. SHA-1 is another algorithm, it gives 160-bit output. SHA-2.6 gives 2.6-bit output. Obsolete hashes. So as computing power went up, starting from 90s, computer power went up from 1960s itself, but starting from 90s, it's like dramatical improvement. And whatever the hashes with smaller size are there, they are becoming obsolete. For example, this is the, this is the announcement you people might have already seen where in 2017 google has announced that it has found a way to break the sha1 so it is assumed that it is impossible to get in a meaningful period of time using the existing computing power to do sha1 collision means get to strings to have the same sha1 value but google has found a way that given a PDF document, they can modify the PDF document in such a way, such that we get a SHA-1 collision. So this happened in 2017. So now SHA-1 is obsolete and no one is using it. Minimum recommended is SHA-256. And remember SHA-26 is 26-bit, SHA-1 is 160-bit. And one more thing I want to tell is, regarding the MD5. In 1995, when MD5 came into picture, people thought it's near impossible to break this. But now, MD5 can be broken within 30 seconds in the smartphone we are holding in our hand. And these are the SHA-1, how much time it will take to break the SHA-1. So we can either use a brute force or shutter technique. This is the technique that Google used to get to the SHA-1 collision in a meaningful period of time. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching.